At my dojo in Los Angeles, after the warm-ups, I start all my classes with Suari Waza Shomenuchi Ikkyo. Of course, those who have knee problems or ankle problems are encouraged to stand up doing the technique instead of Suari Waza. But those who don't have these types of physical problems or limitations can gain so much benefit from starting every class with a seated technique, particularly Suari Waza Shomenuchi Ikkyo. First of all, Suari Waza really develops a student's base and center. Secondly, if done right, Suari Waza becomes a preventative measure, keeping knees and ankles supple and healthy. And I'll talk more about what I mean when I say, if done right. And doing this technique at the beginning of every class simultaneously gives uke an opportunity for a fantastic stretch if they do it right. So um, there's a couple things to keep in mind to ensure keeping your knees and ankles healthy over the years. And in today's video, uh, it's from our five-day summer camp in Los Angeles last August. Um, I encouraged Uke to switch to Seiza once they were close enough to strike. This not only grounds them more deeply, but also gives them this opportunity for the great stretch in the hamstrings, the glutes, the lower back muscles, the mid-back, even the lats, um, while Uke, uh, sorry, while Tori or Nage executes this technique. So I hope today's video will give you some insight, some inspiration, some motivation to help you make the most of your training and take your Aikido to the next level in 2024. Let's check it out. Sorry. Hey, Dozo. When you're taking a chemi for this, this can be a fantastic warm up, too. So, not even thinking about the martial arts technique, you know. Wanji san, just I'll attack, please. And you sit, Seiza. Yes. So, first of all, if I'm coming over to him, right, then, of course, I'm walking on the soles of my feet. <laughs> what else would I do? Uh, when I get there, though, and sorry. We learn also that when we do uh, shikko, knee walking, we stay on the soles of our feet. This is really important, of course. But when you arrive, whether you're running, standing up, or coming in from shikko, when you arrive, you can, you can let your toes out. Look how much that grounds you. And the more you're grounded, the more you can take advantage. Look at this wonderful stretch I'm getting. And I'm still stretching keeping this connection to him so that he has to complete this. I don't know about you, but man, my lower back loves that, right? Then pop up. If I need to, to cover some ground to get to him, feet come up like that. But if, if we had ended up with me noticing that he's that close, then I can just pull up my legs already into Seiza and come up this way. Then again, I get this nice stretch, okay? And of course, if your knees have pain or discomfort, feel free to do this standing, but I recommend, if you can, to continue on your knees. Hi, go ahead. Yes, here, that's where you want, did you see? He, uh, he really reacted sharply because he's sensitive to when this came into the opening. I think that's why, anyway. So you just focus on the center line here. Because there's that, there's that. All right. Variation. Yo! <laughs> yes, good. This is offense right now. I'm the attacker. I'm coming in to attack him. So this is an offensive tool. And as I think you guys know, um, European sword, my understanding of it, limited understanding, is that there's a shield, right? They do a lot from irimi body rather than hammi body or shomen body, right? A lot of this. This is your irimi body. Right? We all do that for irimi nage. But anyway, so a lot of this, and you can have a shield. So shield, of course, is defensive. Then your sword is offensive. Japanese sword, defensive, offensive.
Hey, we'll get back to the video in just a moment, but I just wanted to give you a gift for joining me today. I want to give you a free resource, my body alignment checklist called The Three Lines of Equilibrium in Budo. It's a simple PDF guide. The checklist will help you begin to identify and eliminate any ineffective or harmful patterns of movement so that you can preserve your body and improve your technique and continue training for years to come. You can download it at leah-suzuki.com slash body alignment checklist with hyphens or just click on the link in the description below. I hope you enjoy the gift and I hope you take action on it. Now let's get back to the video. <laughs> it's, I, like I just got chills saying that. It never ceases to uh, impress me. Um, I think it's really a profound idea in, it, in and of itself that this is offense and defense all at the same time. So, take Nukemi. I come up to Anjay san I come into this when I arrive. My offense didn't work. So now I try to get up from my center already. Try to bring my feet underneath me. And this is my defense because he's already taking my center. So this doesn't e sometimes this doesn't even have a chance to do its offensive move on the second or third or fourth ukemi. Eh? Yes, 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 yes. Good. If we close the gap, then an experienced uke will not take that opportunity, if I'm this close, will not take the opportunity to the, you know, he doesn't even want to do it. If I were taking ukemi, I would not now take this opportunity to yeah, do one of these big kiri oroshi. So he's like, ooh, now, now I need this for defense. Coming in, he used it for offense. Then he uses it for defense or offense according to the situation. Here. Cool. Uh-huh. And, you know, in, in AKI, Kido Kai International, we do a lot, actually, um, of even from this distance, if I'm attacking him, raising this up and coming in. We do a lot of that. And most groups don't, so it's not right or wrong. Um, most groups come in and then, bam! Right? Kiru Oroshi. We do a whole lot of this suriyage. And... Uh, so when I teach in seminars where there's not a AKI people, sometimes, as you've seen, sometimes I explain, oh, let's do suriyage. But usually when I call a new person up, um, if I want suriyage, I do things that will elicit that rather than just tell him. Because it's a natural thing. So if I follow him up and I close that gap, if I keep this gap small and experience uke, it's going to use this for defense, which looks an awful lot like suriyage. Then most people, if I finish the technique, and then I back off, I get ready for the next one, he's coming kiri oroshi. <laughs> most of the time. So look at that. Just chasing him around the mat, closing this gap. You can get what you want, Julie. All about this, not this. So a couple of tips. If you look down, you're probably going to push down. And you're probably going to disengage. So look at, keep the eyes at eye level. And don't push down on the arm. Instead, enter her center. Very nice. The beginner level, a lot of times people come in, I'll attack, uh -huh. a lot of times people come in and then they, they stay here. Of course, because they got a lot to think about. Oh, I got to bend this knee, or was it this knee? How do I fall? I got to slap with this hand, that hand, I don't remember, right? <clears throat> a lot going on. But you want to try and try and try to more and more engage with your center, right? Not just stopping and attacking here. Attack through him. So here, so that there is that collision. Imagine if the cliff 
Imagine if the cliff was like, here comes that wave, and the wave was like, oh. <laughs> so crash into it. And you don't have to bounce right back. It crashes in and up, doesn't it? So on the ice mouse. So God. especially if you close this gap, it goes up. As I said before, if you give a gap, then he's coming with kiriyoroshi, the downward cut. Most likely. In conclusion, I hope you found this helpful and interesting. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know in the comments section how often you do swariwaza at your dojo. And let me know if you have knee or ankle problems. And, of course, as usual, let me know what seminars you've attended so far this year and what seminars you plan on attending the rest of the year. If you're watching this video at the time that it was published, I'll be teaching in Cork, Ireland this weekend, October 27th through 29th. Let me know in the comments section if you're going to join me there. Uh, you can find out more information about all my upcoming seminars at leah-suzuki.com slash seminars. Of course, please feel free to leave other comments and questions as well. Again, I want to give you a gift, my checklist called the Three Lines of Equilibrium in Budo. It's from my paid online course called Body Alignment in Movement, but it's free for you today as a thank you for watching my video and hanging out with me. The checklist will help you identify and eliminate ineffective and harmful patterns of movement so that you can preserve your body and improve your technique and continue training for years to come. Just click on the link below or in your browser type in leah-suzuki.com slash body-alignment-checklist. Again, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.